Do you remember that phrase? When you were asking for it, he's asking. <laughs> I hold my hand out flat, palm turned up, thumb well out of the way. The trouble with you, Mr. Slap, is that you're too smart, slap, for your own good, slap. Now back to your seat and mind that tongue of yours. Sweeney beside me can't figure out long division, asked for the answer. Kerry caught me whispering. You boy, what are you whispering about? Nothing, sir, nothing, nothing. Do you think I'm a fool, boy? I don't know, sir. <laughs> you were asking for it, the consensus at break. What did you go and say that for? I don't know. I just said the words that came into my head. Palmer shakes his head sorrowful. Never provoke him, he says. Never. We know his father beats him. Carrie is talking to the tall red-headed brother, their eyes tracking the yard. I note their cold amusement and look away, shaking, feeling my back go stiff. My hand still hurts, a dull pain, like you feel after you've banged your elbow. If the edge of the leather strikes on the base of the thumb, that's what you feel. The lingering throb after the shock wears off. The wisdom says, always offer your left. It's hard to write for a while after if you give them your right. Somebody asked, but what if you're left-handed? <laughs> I join in the jeering, happy to sink into gang mind, but partly I'm dislocated, remembering the afternoon we brought Palmer in, bright and clear, Sister Angela ruffling his hair, my rebel angel, she called him, and I half understood. Class collection. No pun intended. No pun did I think of it. Hmm. We collect for the black babies something to do with missions in Africa. He tallies the count by rows. Whichever row gives the most gets homework off for the weekend. A new boy joins us a couple of weeks in. We see his father drop him off at the gate. We note the big car. We note he's a bit nervous. I don't know that anything was exactly said. But we quickly grow fond of Martin, his large contributions to the collection easing his path to acceptance. The word says that Kerry pockets the money. We're not sure if we believe this, but we spread the word anyway. <laughs> a certain grim satisfaction in this quiet event. Truth be told, I don't mind the homework, but it's a given among us to hate it, and I'm happy to go with the gang. A balance against the grey fog in my head of something inside me that holds back from the whirl of cliques. Seriously, someone asked. You read stuff you don't have to read. The gap is already there, and I have a new skill to learn, marking my sense of distance from what's taken as given by most. Take Martin, for instance. I'm gleeful as anyone in the rough crowding that hasn't give and give. But I feel his unease. I see the knot in his tie that he's always adjusting. Or pennies, we're told, go to help the priests in Africa set up schools for poor children. I wonder if they're like us, with our patched jumpers, our scuffed shoes. Except that, of course, they probably don't have to wear as much because it's a given. We are poor, and some of us are poorer than others. Except for Martin. And there's the thing, the reason some bully him, some ignore him, and others are fascinated. Imagine, they have a car. I squint up at Kerry counting coins. He has a car. <laughs> I swear to God, when these poems start coming out, I kept finding this message. Is it any wonder he was always in trouble? <laughs> There's one point there I remember when he came in. I, I, I was laughing myself, I have to admit. Um, my father says, OK, you're going back to school. And I says, I don't think I will. He says, why? He says, it's not really very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, this is called gymnastics. In the comics, 
They're called, I can't tell you how much reading comic shaped us. <laughs> Our generation, Jerry remembers. There was a barber down in William O'Brien Street, Fitzharris, and he had a pile of comics about 18 inches high in the corner. And myself and some of my brothers were known as the politest kids in Blackpool. We'd lock in next to this pile of comics. And uh, you're next. I know, so you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we have this great reputation of like, oh, for being the most manly in this court. But really, but no interesting in our haircut and a good red other comics. Yeah. And the comics, they're called plimsolls. We call them rubber dollies. Why? Nobody knows. That says it's a cork name. I didn't know we could do that. Change the name of the thing. Gym shoes, the teacher says. White canvas, we wear them for what is called gymnastics. Vests, football shorts, we change on the long benches around the wall. I enjoy this, the stretches, jumping and running. I enjoy it more than the football games in the yard or on the streets, especially sprints. We buy them in drummies on Merton's Quay. I expected ships somehow, warehouses, giant barrels of wine, horses and cranes and great masts sparred and canvassed. The name is the name of what used to be. A disappointment in fact, but later, snug to the fire, I paint ships and colours and exotic sailors into the name, making the pictures come alive. Merchants, I think, must have looked like Mr. Clifford, who has a grocery shop on Shandon Street full of rich things. The gym teacher used to be in the army. He's keen on what he calls drip. We have small coloured flags, we make lines, we copy his movements. He gets ratty when we don't all make the same move at the same time. He shouts and roars at us, but he doesn't beat us. In our eyes, he's all right. <laughs> on Wednesday mornings, there's a feeling of lightness, packing the rubber dollies. Today, we have gymnastics, a small taste of freedom outside the walls. So, one more, and then you can oh, express your relief by leaving as fast as you um, I, I can't tell you how unexpectedly happy I am with this choice, especially Patricia, because it sets the, it puts it up to Dublin. <laughs> it's the first one city, one book. That's a book of poetry. And I have to tell you a story. I'll explain to somebody that nobody in Cork ever says, I was in San Francisco or I was in Paris. You say, one time there I was in Paris. <laughs> There's always the suggestion that you know, you're constantly back and forth. One time there I was in So anyway, you're going to love this one. I take a breath for us. One time there I was in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> and I said to the Queen, okay, this is a true story, right? Carol Ann Duffy, that wonderful, wonderful poet, she was the poet laureate, being there at the same time Paul Amin was her professor of poetry. She got on really well with Mrs. Windsor. Right? Then Colleen Carlin's died in the wool Labour Republican and comes back from the family of Wallace and Carlo. But they got on well because they're two women in know how to take care of business. So Carla, are you bored? No? Okay. Carla persuades Elizabeth to have a night in celebration of the variety of British poetry today. And then purely for different says, wouldn't it be nice to have an amb ambassador's Maryland? Oh yes, what a very good idea. <laughs> so there was a doctor me in. Um, obviously there was no security screening in front there. <laughs> Stroll into Buckingham Palace somewhere. And, we're, you know, and um, the, the laureates of the British um, countries and of Northern Ireland, they get to read. Sinead Morrissey, by the way, the Belfast laureate, has, has the pleasure of Philip the Greek coming up to have and saying, and that was a very nice poem. And did you write it all yourself? <laughs> <laughs> he actually said that. <laughs> anyway, we're there, we're drinking the free wine and cracking up at the notions of the pages carrying the trays. And like they feel more royal than the Queen, right? Um, and then I said, I'm myself face to face, and I have to say something. So I said, I was delighted you enjoyed your visit to my native city of Cork. Why is the tribe colour straight? Oh yes, she says, like that. Now bear in mind, she's 84, it's 9 o'clock at night, it's her third gig of the day, and she comes back and says, oh yes, they really put it up to Dublin, didn't they? <laughs>
And I was there thinking, what a great president of the Republic she'd make. <laughs> anyway, there's no fear Charlie Boy would come up with anything. <laughs> uh, and so the last point of the book. And thank you for coming. I'm, I'm so touched and I'm so happy to see Mary Arne and so many familiar and yeah. <laughs> Myself and Paul are going home with hand knitted Mary Ern socks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the reward for being here tonight. So thank you for being here. And um, I finish with this. In the small closed yard. In the small closed yards, boys ricochet off the walls and bounce off each other. Animal spirits all. Here the dark women patrol, each one a gliding mystery. Some kind, some cruel, all veiled. Mrs. Ryan is dust. That room is dust and rubble, under a road somewhere or in a landfill. The rocking horse, bright lit as by lightning in a storm, fades into black. Some of those boys are already gone, spun into the wind over the city they never left. They fall like snow, like ash, Soft through the rippling music of the bells on Shandon Street, St. Mary's Road, Fair Hill, on Churchfield and Gronabrar, on Spangle Hill that became Farnry, down over the valley of Sweet Blackpool. And I am still walking up Redemption Road, my hand warm in her warm hand, thumb under the strap of the school bag, snug on my back clutch of drawings to be smoothed out on the kitchen table. Everyone will say they're very good. Then they'll forget about them. I run outside <coughs> and everything will go on forever. Thank you to Lord Mayor, Councillor Kieran McCarthy for um, your great words as well. Um, and to my colleagues Declan and Michael and Adrian, who, you know, we wouldn't really be here this late without. <laughs> and also, um, you know, I feel I'm a bit of an imposter syndrome now to you after all those great words, you know. And I think um, Liam Ronane is here in the audience and um, he really did bring Park City Library to where And caught me all I know. <laughs> so um, thanks a million and please um, encourage others to read this beautiful book and to partake in the events um, throughout um, the project. Thank you.